for measuring the measurement of time we are using clocks nowadays which gives the exact time and the many kinds of clocks we are using yeah, from the wall clocks which contains the pendulum and the uh, what the uh, wrist watches and clocks and uh, digital watch nowadays the smart watches also there so like that uh, number of uh, kinds of watches we are using and we are getting the most approx correct time compared to the olden days and uh, in olden days means just uh, 20 or 30 years back the wall clocks most of the wall clocks containing the pendulum see in your textbook page number 145 the figure number 13 3 in that the first figure figure a this is the wall clock and here it contains the pendulum but nowadays the clocks we are using doesn't has uh, have this pendulum instead of that they are having the electric circuit with one or two cells and these kind of clocks are called quartz clock and the measurement of time by these clocks are uh, very exact one compared to the olden days clock however the all clocks the hands of the clocks are moving in a circular motion but they also follow the periodic motion how it is possible the hands are moving in a circular motion but for each motion it contains a proper time interval we know generally there are three hands in the clock the second hand minute hand hour hand second hand move in each second minute hands move in each minute and hour hand move in each one hour so like that correct interval of time they are moving and completing the circular motion so the motion used in correct interval of time is called periodic motion so most of the clocks are using the periodic motion also so in that the very clear example we can say for the periodic motion is the pendulum clock the pendulum in the clock is called symbol pendulum it continues the periodic motion okay so let me study about what is pendulum this pendulum is called symbol pendulum which always moving otherwise always having the motion periodic motion symbol pendulum simple pendulum the simple pendulum arrangement arrangement is nothing but very simple like its name there will be a metal ball which is connected with a string or thread and fixed in a rigid body see it is given in your textbook page number 146 see this the metal ball which is connected with a string or thread and fixed in a rigid body the fixed body so this is this arrangement is called symbol pendulum here is one as an improvised device i made a symbol pendulum for you here i used the rubber ball instead of the metal ball because I got only that and I connected the rubber ball with a thread and fixed in a rigid strand. Okay, so this motion is mostly what? Like the symbol pendulum. And in this, the metal ball is called bob. What? Bob. 
the metal ball is called bob and the motion the simple pendulum is taking is also known as oscillatory motion why it is called oscillatory motion the simple pendulum moves side to side motion so that is also known as oscillatory motion see it will move from side to side we can move it from i am pulling from one side and the releasing so it can move to side to side but here it is striking the stand see side to side it is moving can you see yes it's moving side to side like the clock so this kind of motion is also known as oscillatory motion what oscillatory oscillatory motion that is nothing but the to and fro motion in the sides to and fro motion is called oscillatory motion the pendulum is said to have completed one oscillation how can we measure we know the pendulum is having the oscillatory motion how can we measure the one oscillation otherwise how can we say the oscillation is the one oscillation is completed for that we have to take a mean position mean position is nothing but the pendulum is fixed at the center of the rigid body isn't it center of the rigid body so you may mark at the floor the what rest position of the pendulum otherwise back side of the wall back side of the pendulum on the wall where it is resting so it is resting at the center of the rigid body isn't it for here for here i can mark here it is the rest position otherwise here i can mark the rest position of the pendulum then if we pull one side and release it started to move see the both side it is moving we can't push it is if we pull and release it started to move in both sides so from the rest position it's going this side and also that side and come to the uh, mean position then again it's go this side and this side come to mean position it is its movement so one oscillation means from the center position going one extreme to other extreme and come to the rest position this is called one oscillation like that it it taking number of oscillation do you understand this so we can so we can do one activity to understand this for the time taken of the oscillation the time taken for the oscillation for one oscillation is known as time period of the pendulum what is time period time period of the pendulum so oscillatory motion is nothing but the to and fro motion of the pendulum is called oscillatory motion and also the time taken by the pendulum to complete one oscillation is called time period okay so now the activity is given here how to find out the time period because as it is started the motion is not a uh, correct level so after that it will move correctly from uh, side to side so if we have to take the time if we take the time for 10 oscillations otherwise 20 oscillations and uh, me measure the and point out the total time taken then we have to divide the total time taken by the total oscillation number of oscillation we will get the time period for one oscillation 
means what? If the pendulum, it is in the rest position and if it start, if it started to move from the rest position, it go this extreme and go this extreme with the same distance. It go and come to the rest position. So, this is called one oscillation. So, like that, the number of oscillations we have to count like this and also we may use the stopwatch or the digital watch we, uh, to find out the total time taken for the total number of oscillation. From that, we will find out the time period that is time taken for one oscillation. Time period equal to total time taken by total number of oscillation. For example, the total time taken may be 40 seconds and we call, uh, what counted for 10 oscillation is 40 by 10 equal to 4 seconds. The time taken for one oscillation is 4 seconds. So like this we can find out, we can measure the time. 